Hello. Today we're going to have a look at prepared statements in PDO. So prepared statements are one of the reasons you might want to use PDO. I imagine probably maybe the best reason. I don't, I don't know. Depends on what your needs are. Uh, so prepared statements are a means for preventing SQL injection attacks. Uh, they are generally efficient. How they kind of sort of work is uh, the query is built and then the variables are put in afterwards. SQL injection attacks are based on the idea of uh, like uh, mixing or you know inserting variables into a query and then those variables end up changing the shape of the query. I don't really want to try and explain SQL injection attacks right now, but uh, I'm telling you it's your job as a programmer to prevent them and prepared statements can help you with that. So this is kind of a complex process because there's several steps to it and there's also three ways that you can do this but in general what you do is you write the SQL uh, you prepare the statement you bind the parameters which is you where you put in the variables and then you execute it so I like to compare everything with MySQLi if you were doing things uh, procedurally so MySQLi you, when you do stuff like this, this is what I mean by dropping variables into a query, you need to sanitize those. In other words, escape all the potentially harmful characters. That's an extra step. Here in the world of PDO and prepared statements, we just we structure our queries differently. And so there's three ways you can do it. So here's what it looks like when you prepare a statement. So here's my SQL, and instead of variable names in our SQL, we put in question marks. Well, there's in two of the three ways, that's how you do it. So that's one way. And then this is the binding of the parameters and the execution of the statement. This is kind of like a shorthand way of doing it. This is the way that I like to teach it. So notice we prepare the statement the same way, question marks, and we bind parameter one and bind parameter two. That's one, that's two, that reference is a variable, that reference is a variable, and there's our execute. Notice this is more steps, but it's kind of easy to read. So I kind of like it for learning. Whereas this is just the execute, and what you're passing it is an array of uh, arguments, essentially. Now, this last one here is one that I don't really use, but I'll show you what it looks like. So same kind of, we prepare, prepare the statement, but instead of just putting in uh, question marks and just assuming that they're called 1, 2, 3, 4, etc., we give the name, so colon name, colon value. And then when we bind the parameters, we bind it to name, bind it to value. That's not the way that I actually ever do things, but it's a third way to bind those parameters. So that's one of the reasons this video is going to be a little longer than I'd like, is that there's multiple ways to do things. So what I'm going to do is head back to the previous example where I showed you the simple query. So query is suitable for when you don't need a prepared statement. So if there's no variables, right, where team equals STL, boring. Uh, what we want to do is say where team equals... something else right and something else is some kind of variable and that variable uh, I, let's stick with what I had there I had st. Louis no I'm not exactly a Cardinals fan but I don't know I, I'm a Lance Berkman fan so there we go so now I'm saying hey I'm expecting a variable to go here so in terms of writing the SQL uh, it's no more difficult this is referencing some variable. This is generally kind of come from a form or something like that, but I'm not trying to make this a huge example. And so instead of this right here, this is where things, I, I'm gonna stick with this little result printer here and I'll explain it at the end. So what's gonna be different is this. I can't get away with just this query method. Instead, what I need to do is first prepare the statement. So, so I'm going to do that by creating a, I'm creating a variable called result because I'm assuming that this is where I'm going to, I'm going to get results from this query and I'm going to store them as that thing called result. And so I'm going to do name of my connection, uh, prepare, because I'm preparing this statement. And the thing that I'm preparing is that SQL right there. And then, so that's, that's, that's how this is going to be. The interesting parts are the methods for binding. So I kind of, I guess I'll do them one, two, three in that order. I don't really want to because the first one is not such a palatable option if you're only binding one uh, value, but I'll do it. So that would be skipping the binding step kind of sort of, or more accurately uh, combining it with the execute. Oops, talking, typing, hard. Uh, so result, 
Oh man, I pressed insert. So uh, we'll say execute. And how that worked was you passed it an array. And I don't like passing an array of one value. It seems ridiculous. I, I think it is ridiculous, but that's kind of method one of binding. You could do it that way. And uh, if you were going to do it that way, the next step would be to... Uh, I guess we're good, right? From this point, we can test it. So this little thing right here, let me walk you through what it is. This is a while loop. And in my next video, I'm going to show you how to display the results. But none of this goes anywhere if I can't show you that it works. This is a while loop. It means it it's going to execute until this condition evaluates to false. So it's weird. the weird thing is this condition is also an assignment. So I'm creating this variable called row, which is going to store the current row that I'm looking at. And I'm assigning it the value of whatever's in result and this fetch uh, method. Fetch uh, pulls the first time through, it's going to pull the first row. Then it's going to pull the second row. Then it's going to pull the third row. Then it's going to pull the fourth row. And at the point where it runs out of rows, this is, it get, it's false. And this thing gets assigned false and this while loop breaks. And inside of the loop, I am shooting out the name field from that row. Uh, let me show you what the underlying table looks like. It's called hitters. That's that name field that I'm referencing. You could do any one of these. All right, so I don't like that this is here, but it kind of has to be here. I know this video is going to be a little longer than I like, but it's also almost done, kind of, I guess. All right, so it worked. I guess we can conclude that. So let's say no more method one. Let's do method two. Method two is going to be we got that thing that we uh, we prepared, and I'm going to go bind param, and bind param is pretty explicit. I say parameter one is going to correspond to team, like that, and then I have to go down here and so result. You see, so the difference here is I have to call that execute function again, sort of. So you see what this is now? Like this was actually this step and that step are kind of the same, but I'm passing it something as opposed to binding it previously. And I'm going to get the same results here because it's the same query. And I don't, right? I don't know that I just proved anything because it kind of looks like nothing, but I'm telling you, if it was messed up, I would get nothing. Now, the other way of doing that was. Uh, we take this question mark, and I go colon team, and then for, oh gosh, I, I know this is going to be copy-paste, so I'm going to do this, because this video, I'm always hoping these things are going to be like six minutes, but I, I know they're not going to be six minutes. I'd rather do thorough work than uh, fast work. I mean, I talk fast, I know that, but anyways. So this is going to be like a string, and it's going to be uh, the placeholder name. So you're saying, hey, instead of just thing in spot one, I'm looking for thing in spot. Oh, it's not. It's team. Thing in spot team is going to be team. I'm going to execute. And this is going to be pretty not interesting. Actually, that was interesting because I didn't comment out this stuff. It was trying to bind to spot one. And spot one is now called spot team. So that didn't work. Hey, hey, sweet, right? You got that. So I feel like I did. So these two things are kind of the same, right? Like two and three. One of them is just naming them. The other is relying on the position. This is no more efficient than, my gosh, my cutting and pasting is out of control. But uh, this is no more efficient than this. So I kind of prefer this. But you should prefer what you prefer because that's your job. Um, but where the first one actually pays off a little bit, versus the second is when these things start to get more complex. Like, so let's say where team uh, is that and uh, age is greater than something, right? So at the point where we've got like uh, two things. So if say I want everyone on St. Louis who's over 25, method one now becomes more like, uh, like this. You see, and that's that's cool, right? At this point, we're saving ourselves yet another line. And I'll show you what that does. I get a subset, great, I guess that works. And if I want to do it this way, I would say bind param one to team, bind param two 
to age. I know someone's wondering, what the heck, how'd you do that? How'd you duplicate that line? Well, your IDE probably has a duplicate feature. If it doesn't, if it doesn't, well, sorry, it's a glorified copy and paste, but I bet you you might have one. And uh, method two, if you want to call it method two, looks like that. And you see, so I can actually do this in one line here if I want to go shorthand mode, or it's going to take three lines here. I've got no problem with doing this. I mean, you're not going to have that many queries that you're building. So I, I, I like to be explicit about it, but again, use your own judgment. So that is how you execute prepared statements uh, using PDO. This mess down here, this is just displaying results. In my next video, I'll show you how to display those results. I mean, you could go with that, but there's other ways you could do things. So I'll explain some of those options in the next video. Thanks for watching.